from one result that you read in a parenthetical in one moment of one script, right? And then everything revolves, this whole thing, the whole script for you revolves around, I got to get to tears, right? Because if I don't get to tears, I'm not doing it. And this right. also goes Buster. right? So really, it can, it can have symptoms, it has all these repercussions, right? And it can just come from you trying to do it well, right? You're looking at a script, you said the character is it, cries right here, I gotta cry. See, now other actors go, because their technique tells them, really, tears are just a release of what? Right, it's just a release. Right? So that just becomes now part of the story. As opposed to this, where it becomes the whole script. So therefore, I don't have to get to that point. You know, I always bring people, to, you know, De Niro, you know, she always says something twice in a movie, right? Part of me always wonders if it's because he needs to hear it. Like he says the line, and then it's, no, it's, I, I didn't feel it there. Now I'm going to mm -hmm. say it again. Mm -hmm. That to me, for a young actor, would be a horrible choice, right? They would get in their head about that. But De Niro goes, because of his technique, this is what I need. And therefore, I'm going to follow it through. Mm -hmm. And he did that since Mean Streets. He's been doing that since his first film with the Palma. Do you know, he's been, it's a repetition for him. Part of it is his training, right? He did Meisner, he did Studio, so he knows the repetition leads him somewhere. But part of it is, fuck it. Fuck it, this is what I need. And that's really what separates you. If you've ever worked with really, really wonderful, like wonderful great actors, they do the craziest shit. Still to this day, Johnny Depp never does the script. Never. He's never on the line. Do you know what I mean? He's taken it to a whole other place. Because he, his best friends are writers. They're Kentucky crazy, and that's a specific crazy. <laughs> Kentucky crazy, man. You know what I mean? That's why him and Hunter Thompson got along, right? Because they, they're just, their brains are in a, let's go shoot something and then watch it. <laughs> Drink some whiskey and talk about how cool that thing we shot was. You know, if you ever gone out of Kentucky, that's, you know, let's go kill something, then, then snort the, 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 the fumes from that motorcycle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Florida and Kentucky, those people drive me crazy. But, but you know what I mean? There's a madness to him. So he knows he can elevate it. That's part of his technique. Do you know what I mean? And there's these things that they get to give themselves before they became stars. Before they became big. Because they knew it served them. You know? It was funny, I was watching Platoon. Johnny Depp's in Platoon. Yeah. He's got a quick cameo, but the minute you see him, you're like, yeah, man, you're a soldier. Mm -hmm. It's just the way he knew to take that character. Do you know what I mean? And again, you guys forget, every part can be significant. <laughs> Susan always says this, There's are, there are no small parts. Daniel Day-Lewis has one cameo in Gandhi. Has anyone seen him in Gandhi? You gotta look for him. Mm -hmm. He's in Gandhi for 30 seconds, but he's specific. I believe him. There's something about him that when he's walking through, I'm like, Jesus, who's that guy? Didn't know his name. Never thought him about him again until I go back. Michael Fassbender was in 300. Mm -hmm. He actually had a big part in 300. Yeah. Do we remember him? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. But we had to be told. We had to be told that that's Michael Fassbender. Otherwise, what we're talking about is, you know that character? That guy, when we say that guy, when we say that woman, as opposed to that performance, they presented a three-dimensional human being. Mm -hmm. If you're talking about, oh, that was a great performance, you're talking about, you saw the acting, right? And that separates a lot of good performances from great performances, mm -hmm. you know? And you, have, you get to remember I, there are still perf there are still characters that live with us. There's this great documentary called The Inventor on Elizabeth Holmes. Mm -hmm. Has anyone seen this documentary? Mm -hmm. This is why you, know, oh, you guys yeah. got to watch documentary. Yeah. Yeah. She was I don't know if everyone remembers this, but two years she was uh, arrested for fraud. She 
but you know, lied to people about finding this way of, de of early detection and blood testing. Yeah. That she had a little machine instead of sending it out to labs. And there's an interesting thing that, that is said by an economic uh, behavioral scientist. We as human beings are more interested in stories than we are in data. And this is very true. Just look at who our president is. He created a story about a downtrodden group of white men who need your support now because they have no more voices. They're always being told they're wrong. And we need to go back to 1950 and live in that time where Eisenhower and, you know, segregation and, you know, life was good, <laughs> you know. And he sold the narrative. He sold it brilliantly, do you know. And in that way, people forgot about facts. People forgot about truth. People forgot about information. And trust me, if people are still, if he's going to sell that same story, people will buy it for this next election. So all these people who are running against him, they still haven't figured out the narrative. Mm -hmm. They got to have a narrative as exciting mm. as Trump's to contest. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, he will win, and then the person after him will win again. What was Obama's narrative? Yeah. Change. 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 And he said it with like a preacher rhythm. Mm -hmm. Now we are going to change. <laughs> and he was gorgeous, wasn't he? He was so beautiful. <laughs> you're like, you're just beautiful. <laughs> Motherfucker had, didn't have enough experience. <laughs> he didn't have enough experience, did He's he? Slick, though. To make real deals, real deals. And because he's so brilliant, he couldn't count out, which he needed to, right? So in the second year, second term, what was the narrative? We still got work to do. <laughs> we are not done, right? And we all like, yeah, yeah. You're getting filibustered. You can't get anything through. You're telling them they're wrong. You know, you have people, people screaming at him. He had press conferences where people didn't even say he was president. Do you know? They told him that he was from where? That he wasn't even American. And he kept on trying to sell the narrative. But what you got to remind yourself is that's part of your responsibility as actors is to be in the story. Right? Your job is to connect and be at a story, a part of the story. You draw people in to the story. You allow us to see how the story evolves. You connect us to different elements of the story. And if you're not specific and clear how to get the story through your technique, you will be lost. Or there will be a moment where you will go back and rely on these results. And that is a danger. Sorry, keep going back. No, no, go, you ask, please. Okay, cool. Um, so when you're coaching somebody, do you just... If it says crying, you just mark that off? You just... No, what, what, what do, do you, I see it as? That participates in what? Story. Story. So you're going to motivate the release. No, I'm going to clarify why for this human being, because this is the human being you're creating, why that, why that moment was a release. Then I'm going to allow, hopefully, if I'm good, which I am, I'm going to allow a way for them to see it for themselves. In connection to the story, in connection to the character, and further in connection to the moment. Right? So in other words, if I was working with you, I'd go, okay, what does this moment say that he's releasing here? He just said, I love you. Right? And there, something came up. I would also allow us to start seeing how that connects to his backstory, his sense of history, what happens to his body.